I'm ready. Is Benjamin ready? Yeah! <laughs> awesome. This is so cool. We made it to our first destination, 158.1 miles driven. <laughs> we are at our uh, second stop of the day. And it's actually our, our last stop. Uh, EVGO system here at uh, Dunkin' Donuts. We're in Connecticut, right? Connecticut, yeah. Yep. So. so that over there, they still have, and they're currently Demolishing. taking apart the old Tappan Sea Bridge. This is further than we originally planned on coming, but it worked out for us, and they even let us charge last night, so we were able to boost up our energy enough so we don't have to make two stops today to charge, just one. This is cool. Look, man, keep looking. Look at the bridge. We're going to go over it in a minute. So I wonder what bridge this is. I don't know. They're crossing over the Delaware River, I can tell you oh, that. Oh, is that what this is? Okay, nice, nice. So we finally got the uh, low battery warning. Never seen this before in the Bolt EV, but it's saying that buddy. it's saying that we can only drive 32 more miles or 26 on the minimum. But luckily, the Maryland house is only what, honey? 6.6 .6 miles away. So just... Your destination is on the left, right by that tractor. There we go. Yeah, right by a tractor for Ben. <laughs> nice. There they Look, are. Yeah, they're all open. They are all open. One, two, three, four. So just pick Four one, of right? them. Yep, just nice. pick one. Here we go. So it's day two. We're here in Virginia. Uh, we're about to go uh, see Mount Vernon. Is that where we're going? Yeah, Washington's house. Yes, okay. We're going to uh, Washington's house. So it's my uh, buddy, Brian. Driving in Virginia, my, my best buddy's driving the vehicle. This what, is not the time. I'm just trying to take a video in DC traffic. What do, you, just turned green. what do you think of the car? Uh, it's interesting. It's got some pickup power to it, huh? It does. If they ever get the uh, get it, the range comparable to a, a gas vehicle, I can see gas dying out for the majority. And Always yep. be like the niches and stuff for like muscle cars and stuff like that. Right. And it's always a lot of fun driving them, but yeah, as the technology develops, it's definitely got a lot more advantages. But it surprised you, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's, like I told you with the quietness. Yep. Uh, not hearing it and driving, and it's got a good ride, so. You said something about like that classiness like more, or luxury yeah, or something? More high end, like high end Cadillac. But it definitely, definitely surprised you. Yeah. I thought it was going to be kind of gutless, but uh, it's got a little bit of zip to it. Yep. <laughs> All right, Ben, you ready for an awesome day? Ben, you ready? Yeah. You're turning the high five. There you go. An elevator that goes down like stairs. Makes it so we don't have to control on the escalator. All right. <laughs> Going down. Going down. Going down.
got to get a picture. So for this trip, and the few that followed, my buddy offered to drive us around in his pickup truck, which was a good idea as I didn't feel comfortable driving our new car around in DC traffic. At some point during our week while we were down there, I decided to take our car out one morning so that I could more or less top off the charge before we were to make the trip back home to Maine. Under any other circumstance, this could have easily been done at our destination where we were staying. But because my buddy lived on the third floor of an apartment complex, there was no convenient place for us to plug in. With that said, it wasn't a big deal, as the closest fast charger was only about 10 miles away. So I grabbed the keys one morning and took a peaceful drive out to the fast charger and charged up our car. This just happened to be the second fast charger we ended up paying for. And although there were other options in the area that were free, mainly level 2 chargers located at either drugstores or parking garages, I didn't mind paying for the quick charge so that I could bring the car back to my buddy's place and park it until we were ready to leave and head back home. On our last day in Virginia, we decided to check out the Air and Space Museum, which was a really cool place to see, as they had all sorts of planes scattered about all over the place. Here we are at the uh, National Air and Space Museum. You can see out back there's the Concorde Airliner right in front with a Boeing 747 and a smaller fighter plane. I mean this place is packed. There's so many planes in here. It is just unbelievable. It's crazy. And over here on the other side we've got the uh, Enola Gay. It's like wow check this out. This is amazing. It is huge. and. They're, they're just everywhere. I would, I would hate to be the guy who had to uh, come in here and stage all these planes like this because there are planes above you, there are planes below you, planes all around and it's just, it is insane the amount of aircraft that they were able to squeeze in this area. <laughs> Benjamin, what is that? What is it? it? It's a spaceship? Yeah. What does Where's it do? It Up to the moon. Up to the moon, that's right. <laughs> Check it out, the Space Shuttle Discovery. This is unbelievable. Pictures do not do this thing justice. This thing is huge. I mean, look at it. I mean, I'm sure this video is not going to do this justice, but it is just gigantic the size of this thing. And here's a quick view of the gigantic rocket boosters on the Space Shuttle Discovery. These are, this is awesome. What an excellent way to end our vacation here in Virginia. Tomorrow we'll start heading back to Maine and we'll have more footage of our uh, trip back home, so stay tuned for that. As you can see, we've got the car packed all up again, back to the brim. <laughs> so the car is all packed, we've got everything stuffed in here again. And you can see, right here, I have it charged up to 86%, if I can focus, there we go. So we're at 86%, we can go 209 miles, and we only need to go about 120, I think, to our first stop. All right, Ben, we're heading home. Did you have fun in Virginia? <laughs> Benjamin. That's that truck. Yeah, that's Brian's truck. But we're gonna hit the road here. In 800 feet, use the right two lanes to take the I-95 North, I-495 East ramp. Use the right two lanes to take the I-95 North ramp. Continue on I-495 East for nine miles. We just came across a Tesla and it's coming up here on my left. And I believe that is a Model 3. I didn't get a good look at it, but yeah, look at that. <laughs> the Model 3. Hey, oh, he's military too. You see that? <laughs> That's awesome. That is so cool.
All right, so we are approaching the Chesapeake House. We passed over the uh, Maryland House, which was about 15 miles back, and we only have about a mile and a half to go, and we'll be at the Chesapeake House. Uh, we have more than half a charge, and that's one reason why we passed over the uh, Maryland House, is because we have more than half a charge. Another reason is we want to make sure we have as much of a charge as possible to get to our next destination, which will be our hotel up in uh, New York. So we're turning off right now. Use the left lane to take the exit. You can see my efficiency. Our efficiency is really good. It, it was actually 4.7 just a moment ago, but it's at 4.6 right now. Continue straight. And I've been alternating between drive and L. So like if I know I'm slowing down, I'll put it in L. If uh, we're just constantly going, you know, 65 miles an hour, I'll keep it in drive because if I let go of the accelerator, I like to um, be able to coast without slowing down dramatically. Let's see if we can find these chargers. It's anything like the Maryland house. It's up that way. Then turn right. Oh, I think I see it. Oh no, those are Teslas. Oh, there they are. Yep. Easy enough. And they're all open, so that's cool. As you can see, we, we showed up here. We have just over a half of a charge, and we drove 123.9 miles, so 124 miles, and we can still go 125. So. The Chesapeake House was another great location. Not quite as big as the Maryland House, but much like the Maryland House, they offered four free DC fast chargers, all of which were unoccupied when we first arrived there. And there we go. We're back in the car. Well, Ben and I are back in the car. Ben's watching his movie right there. <laughs> and uh, my wife is uh, just using the restroom real quick before we head out. And it's more or less fully charged. I just have uh, one bar to go, but we're going to go ahead and unplug. It's uh, dropped down to 16 kilowatts, so I mean, there's no point in sticking around. Yeah, we're going to unplug and head on to uh, New York. And we only have to drive uh, 147 miles to get to where we're staying in New York tonight. So we're, we're doing good. For our next stop that was just about two and a half hours away, we would begin to experience the first couple of hiccups to our trip as we were headed straight to the BMW engineering facility that we had used on our way down. We wouldn't find out until we got there and hooked up to the fast charger that this place was actually off limits to the general public and we would have to unhook and move on to somewhere else. So we made it back to uh, New York and we are at the uh, BMW place that we had stopped at before. One of the uh, few places that we've stopped at twice. So this is cool, we're familiar with it and it was really easy to find this place again. And I'm hooked up to this uh, machine right here. I like this one, it's kind of like the charge points. It's a, it's a pretty cool machine. And Ben just woke up from a small nap i mean he's been up for the most part but he's in the front seat hanging out with mommy hi ben <laughs> you having fun hey can you show me the batteries where are the batteries they're right there yeah yeah i get the one we had just over a quarter of a charge left you could see here i just plugged in ben's climbing in the front seat i guess he's gonna drive <laughs> so yeah, we're hooked up to this machine right here. It's already delivered 1.8 kilowatts in the short time I've been hooked up in two minutes. So, so what that means is, you know, we've got a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack in this thing. So you can you can receive up to 60 kilowatts. Well, I've already received two kilowatts in three minutes. So I like this machine. It's really cool. Um, and it even shows you like I'm at 30% charge now. So I can't remember what the number was when I first plugged in, but it wasn't 30, it was probably 29 or, well, no, it would have been closer to 25. And look, it's already, it's already jumped up to uh, another bar there. So, <laughs> are you driving, Ben? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> and it actually does turn the wheels, so. <laughs> because I have the vehicle on right now, but I'm gonna turn it off here in a moment. And we're just gonna get out and stretch, and our hotel's not far away. It's just up the road, about five minutes, so. Oh my 
Nice area though. Got a lot of chargers. A, a mixed variety of uh, level 2s and level 3s. It's like they have every flavor under the sun here. It's like I don't even know what this one is over here. I've never seen one of these. But it's got, uh, it's got both. It's got both styles it looks like. We got solar panels here. Look at this. <laughs> this one's uh, what, a Delta. I've never seen one of those before. We have seen this one before um, with, different, uh, with a different skin on it. The charge point station. And then we have uh, this guy over here. I've seen these before from EVGO. This one has a label of ABB on it, whatever that is. <laughs> this one's interesting because this one we have up uh, in Maine, a Signet, and it's at my uh, local Nissan dealership. Uh, what is it? Nis Lee Nissan in Auburn, Maine. But they only have the uh, Chatamo connection right there for my Leaf. And over here, this it has a CCS combo. So it'd be interesting to see if they could upgrade their unit and put a CCS on there. I don't know if they would because Nissan doesn't use CCS. They only use the Chatamo, but maybe in the future they'll use both or they'll start leaning towards the CCS. I don't see that they would because Nissan is, you know, that's from like the the Asian market, Japanese, um, and they favor the Chatamo. And I don't really see, you know, personally, I don't see why we would need to have only one standard. It, it's okay to have both, you know? But anyways, moving on. Uh, and then there's an EVGO station right here and they, they have both styles too, the Chatamo and the CCS. So, oh yeah, it's, it's really cool, this location, just having every diff, every uh, flavor under the sun. <laughs> as disappointing as it was to have to unhook from the DC fast charger at the BMW engineering facility, Luckily, our hotel in New York allowed us to plug in using our portable level 1 EVSE. This actually had worked out perfectly for us, as again, we showed up right before check-in, and I was able to get the car hooked up right around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. This time around, I also noticed that the outlet I was plugging into was connected to a 20 amp breaker, so I had no problems switching the ball over to a 12 amp draw versus an 8 amp draw which is the default setting each time you go to use the Level 1 EVSC. Because of this, we were able to add 5 miles to the car for every hour it was hooked up, versus the 3 miles per hour one would receive had we left it alone and on the 8 amp pull. By around 1.30 in the morning, we had just over a half of charge, with more than 50 miles added back onto the car. We had also woken up around that time so we decided to hit the road and continue on our trip back home. It is uh, 1 o'clock in the morning. We both woke up, Rebecca and I, so we thought we'd go ahead and hit the road. I just checked the app here, and we have 100... Let's see if I can focus. There we go. We have 147 miles that we can do, 55% of a charge, and we only need to drive about 90 miles. So we figured, you know what, we're going to take that and go. It says it's going to be complete at 1.15, but that's not this morning, that's tomorrow morning, because again, we're on a level one. But that's more than enough charge to, to get going, so we figured, you know, we're going to go, get to our next destination, right above Hartford, Connecticut, and uh, continue on our trip. So, yeah, we're ready to go. So I'm going to unplug here and start packing up the car. Once the car was all packed up, we were ready to hit the road and make our way back to the Dunkin Donuts that we had previously stopped at in Connecticut on the way down. It wouldn't be until we arrived at the Dunkin Donuts where we would encounter our second hiccup of our trip. Not so much with the charger or being able to charge, but with the fact that the Dunkin Donuts had advertised both online and with a sign on their door that they were supposed to be open at 4 a.m. and nobody was around when we got there. Granted, we showed up about five minutes before they were supposed to be open, which wasn't a big deal, as we used that time to hook up to the fast charger. But when another five minutes had passed, and I had walked up to the door to give it a tug, the door was still locked, and there was no one in sight, even though the lights were left on. I ended up walking next door to the McDonald's, whose lights were also on, but they were closed too, and their sign I think had said something like 6 a.m., so at that point I knew we weren't going to be sticking around here for much longer. After talking with my wife, we decided to unhook early and just head towards Marlboro, Massachusetts, where the free fast charger was. It would take us another hour anyways to get there, and by then all of the fast food joints that serve breakfast 
should be open. So good morning, and here we are. I am on I-495, and we are so close to our next charger. Uh, but I just got the charge vehicle soon notice. I've never got that before. But as you can see, I'm still locked in at 65 miles an hour. I'm not slowing down, and we could still potentially do a maximum of 28 miles, but we don't need to because we're just about three miles away right now. Uh, one and a half miles away from our exit, but two and a half total to get to our charger. So I have no worries or anything, but I just wanted to show because a lot of people wonder, it's like, well, what happens when your battery gets low? You, you can't go as fast. It's, that's not necessarily uh, the case. You can see I'm still locked in at 65 miles an hour. So. I think when you get really low, like when you have only five miles left that you could possibly drive, then the vehicle might limit you uh, on how fast you can go. But I've never had that happen. And just to be this low, that's, you know, that's an achievement for us. <laughs> but uh, no, we're doing good and we're about to uh, pull over here. We're nearing our exit right now. So we'll, we'll be uh, charging before you know it. However, we would run into one more hiccup along the way once we arrived at the DC fast charger in Marlboro, Massachusetts. All right, so what an adventure. You know, this morning has been something else. First, showing up at the uh, Dunkin' Donuts there at, um, right outside of Hartford, Connecticut. We were like, we'll get there right in time and we'll be able to have some Dunkin' Donuts and charge there. Well, we were able to charge and that, that was fine, but <laughs> the Dunkin Donuts wasn't open and then it was like 4.30 and then it was 4.45 and at that point we had enough juice at like somewhere between 4.30 and 4.45 we decided to unhook we weren't going to wait around that was ridiculous um and the McDonald's that was right there they they weren't open either it looked like everybody either opened at five or six o'clock so we, we weren't going to wait around um then we drive to our destination the one that we charged at just last week and it worked fine it was a uh, charge point and that charge point had a fault on it. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So this is plan B. It's actually the first time we used plan B. We, we switched around our plans a couple of times, but not out of uh, necessity. It was because we just, we wanted to do something different and we knew that we could. Uh, but we are actually using our plan B right now. So we're paying for this one because it's an EVgo system. And that's the other thing, and I don't mind paying. Actually, you know, that charge point, if they had more redundancy, if they had two or three units there, that would have been awesome. Uh, free or not free, but it's free. It's the only one. Um, this though, we've got two level threes and right over here we have a level two. So I knew that this place had redundancy. And again, this was my plan B because it was only a couple of miles away. Like we literally had to drive three and a half miles to get here, uh, even though uh, Google said it was like one and a half miles away. So. But we're here, we're charging up now, uh, life is good, <laughs> but it's just, it's been a hectic morning. Everything that we thought, oh, this will be easy, it'll go like this, it didn't happen. So, and it's been happening to us all morning. So, hopefully this is the end of it. We'll, we'll charge here. Uh, I think that we're going to go to one more place because, you know, there's nothing to do. The mall's not even open yet. It's, uh, the mall doesn't open until 10, so, <laughs> but yeah, so. It's, it's, that's why when you uh, plan a trip, it's good to have uh, backup options. You have to have a plan B and possibly even a plan C. Uh, but like I said, everything's working and um, we're just going to move on to the next uh, charging station. We're actually going to put, we're going to plot out to the bottom of Maine. So that's going to be uh, our plan C is uh, to get to the bottom of Maine, York, Maine at the Hannaford that I've been at before. But there's actually a couple other stations along the way. One in uh, Massachusetts, which, which we're at right now. We're still in Massachusetts. Uh, and then there's also another one in New Hampshire. But if either of those two have issues, God, hope, hopefully they don't, um, we'll just go to York. Uh, York, Maine, Hannaford. And we'll charge up there. And hopefully there's no issues there. I'm going to check plug share and hopefully people have been reporting this. And I've been reporting too when they're down. So I just put that on. Uh, plug share myself for the charge point system. So, all right, we're, we're going to continue on here. <laughs> all right, so here we are. We're at our last stop finally <laughs> because the uh, first one that looked a lot like this, the charge point, 
the one that was at uh, Marlboro, Massachusetts, it was down. We ended up going to the EV Go system instead at the Salt Pond Mall. Um, we paid for that one, and we're actually paying for this one. I wasn't sure. There wasn't enough information letting us know if it was free or not. But regardless, uh, I like these units because they actually are slightly better than the EVgo units. They hold a fast charge uh, longer and more consistently than the EVgo units do, where the EVgo seems to fluctuate a lot around like 38 kilowatts or 41. This is holding steady at 44, so I like this. Um, and we're only 100 miles away from home now, so I just checked the car. It says we have 137 mile range, so... I can unplug it any time we can get home and you know it's actually cheaper to charge at home so we might just do that but I'm going to keep it plugged in for now. Uh, my wife's over at Hannaford picking up some uh, cookies for Ben but this is a, a nice location. Uh, it's at the top of Massachusetts and we're not too far from the uh, bottom of Maine. So uh, we've had fun. This has been uh, an adventure. Um, but yeah we were able to get all the way down to uh, Virginia and back we vlogged oh look look at this let me uh, switch the camera over I'll show you what we have for miles so far you can see our trip so far and I'll get another shot of this when once we finally get home we've consumed 306 kilowatts we've driven 1,218 miles in less than a week it's simply amazing and there's been no battery conditioning I can't believe that there hasn't been any battery conditioning but um I guess it's it's cool enough up here. You can see it's 61 degrees still, so it's, we're back in the cold weather. And when we were down there, too, um, we we didn't use the car much because my buddy kept taking us out in his truck, so that was awesome. So uh, big thumbs up for my buddy Brian. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, this has been uh, an awesome vacation, and this car has certainly held up well. And you can see there I've got uh, 147, and it looks like it is down to uh, 38 kilowatts now, but that's... It's probably because I'm approaching the uh, three quarters mark, so I'm almost at uh, 75 percent, or close, real close to 80. And that's that's what it does. It slows down once you get closer to 80 percent, and once you go over 80 percent, it slows down even more. So you usually never fast charge all the way to 100 percent, but you can. You can stay plugged in if you want to, but it's going to take a little bit longer to do that. If I were to turn off this vehicle right now, get a quick shot there. It's 8:56. If I were to turn this off. So it shows uh, 80% will be complete in the next 19 minutes. So, 18. <laughs> so as soon as my wife is done at Hannaford, we will uh, unplug it. That might take the next 10 minutes or so. So we'll probably get real close to that 80% uh, threshold there. All right, well, I, I didn't get a picture of it. I was trying to, but it disappeared too quickly. But I saw the price, and the price was 547 And it was something like 23 or 24 kilowatts. So we got 20-some-odd kilowatts. It costs 547 that's it. That's not bad at all, actually. <laughs> uh, considering I know 30 kilowatts cost us just under $4 at home, so to get 23 or 4 kilowatts for 547 when you're on the go and it's fast, I mean, you're paying for the convenience, of course, that's still cheaper than gasoline, so that's, that's amazing. So, all right, so I'll turn the car back on, and we are up to... There we go, three quarters of the way, and like I said, we're only about 100 miles away from home, so we'll end up with uh, over 50 miles when we get home, so that's that's cool. And then we can plug in and charge up, and we're good. So, Yay! <laughs> yeah, you're not excited because you want to go back to Virginia, right? You miss Virginia. It was nice and warm down there. It's cold up here, right? It's freezing today. Yes, it is. It's too bad. Ben, where do you want to go? Do you want to go home or to yeah. Virginia? I want to go to Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> That's Two us. Out of three. Yeah. I, I want to go. I just, we got to be responsible. We got to go home. So. Mommy, All right. <laughs> well, more on this later. <laughs> and there we go. Just like that, we made it home. We still have a quarter of a charge left in the vehicle. There's the 103 miles we drove. And let's look at the grand total right here. If I go to information. Because we have not, we have not uh, fully charged since we left. Let's see here. And there we go. There's the grand total. We drove 1,272.6 miles, and we consumed 336.3 kilowatt hours of energy. That 
is crazy. <laughs> and the grand total on that for uh, the price that we paid, I'll just put up here right real quick because I don't know off the top of my head, but that's what we paid to drive that distance. That is unbelievable. It helps that we had a couple of places that were free and the places that we did have to pay, again, it was like a ha the half cost of gasoline. Uh, at home, it's a, it's a third the cost. I, I don't know what this actually came out to, but overall, it, based off of uh, what gas is right now and what we paid, I'll put the stats and everything up here so so everyone can see. But yeah, this is this is amazing.